why people need to stop saying the Rams are tanking this season, how the Rams can make the playoffs, and should the Rams bring back John Johnson the third? That's coming up on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramley? Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast. We're also available over on YouTube, so check us out on YouTube. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and most importantly, drop some comments down below. We want all your Rams takes down below in the comment section. My name is Doug McCain. My friends call me DMAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. I've been covering LA sports for over a decade. You might know me for covering the Dodgers over at Dodgers Nation, but I've been repping the Rams ever since they returned to LA and always that guy to your right. I'm joined by Mr. Travis Rogers, the Rams pre half and post game show host for the Rams flagship radio network, ESPN 710 LA. He's entering his eighth season covering the team. Trav, you ready to talk about some mailbag questions? We got some questions from our commenters over on YouTube. You ready to get into it, my man? I love it. Let's do it. Okay, so this first question comes from Michael Stimple, who says, Hey, DMAC, why are fans saying the Rams are tanking? That's a loser's mentality. No way the Rams would do something like that, would they? Where's the Mamba mentality? Now, Trav, I got some strong thoughts on this one, but I'm going to let you hit this one first. Yeah, well, look, I, I think that everybody in a perfect world would love to be a Super Bowl contender every single year. That you see something that happened in New England with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick and say, okay, go do that. There's a reason that that's the example, because it's happened really once in the history of the NFL. It does not work like that. I think if you go for it every single year, and, and by go for it, I think it's a very it's a very specific day, that you're trying to win the Super Bowl that very season, every single season in a row. Think the Dallas Cowboys. How's that worked out for them? Where you're constantly chasing, the, well, we're just this free agent away. We're just this draft pick away. We're just this thing, this head coach, this whatever it may be. And you're constantly, the Cowboys have been bad for 30 years or at best average at any point in there. The way you win in the NFL is knowing when your window is open. Les Snead came on with me on my radio show, Travis and Sliwa, and said exactly that. You need to know where you are in your window. The window was wide open with Aaron Donald and Sean McVay and some of these other guys that have come in. It's less open now. And so the way that you kick it more open down the line is by being strategic in how you do it. You can go for it. And I'm not saying tank is in you take a knee every snap. But you need to understand where you are relative to the other 31 teams in the league. The Rams are in the bottom half. The teams in the bottom half do not win the Super Bowl. So you can decide to stay in the bottom half for as long as you want. You can say, oh, we're going to pay this guy money, or we're going to go do this, or we're going to go do that. And you're going to stay in the bottom half. And maybe you'll go from the bottom half to the top third, but that doesn't mean you're going to win a Super Bowl. The Rams have done it right. The Rams have continued to do it right. They're very strategic on how they do things. And what they understand, I think very, very well is when is the window open? When do you go? And when do you wait for it to open again? And I think right now we're at the beginning of them waiting for it to open again. Yeah, no, I think that you're absolutely right. I think when you look at the word tanking, it has this negative connotation behind it. And people think, oh, these players are going to go out there and they're going to play 75%. They're not going to no. give 100% effort. Look, these players have nothing to gain by not going all out. These players, they want to go out there and they want to have their best game. Also, you have champions. You have Sean McVay. Sean McVay yes. is too good of a coach to tank. He has the competitive spirit and the drive. And you also have those three core pieces in Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford, and Aaron Donald. If it was a a full tank job they would have found a way to get rid of those guys but they're not going to do that I think when a, you look at tanking in general too yes there's Caleb Williams we know Caleb Williams he's like the Victor Wimbenyama of the NFL everyone's talking about him like he's going to be this top pick the reality is seven of the last 11 number one picks have been quarterbacks and you haven't hit on all of them I mean Jameis Winston Jared Goff Baker Mayfield Kyler Murray Joe Burrow Trevor Lawrence and we'll see what we get 
from Bryce, Bryce Young. Young. But still, there's no guarantee you're going to hit. The other thing, too, we saw what the Rams did when they got Goff. I mean, they were projected to have the 15th overall pick. Last year, the 8-9 team got the 14th and 15th pit. So if the Rams finish 8-9, theoretically, they could be in a position to trade up. They really wanted to, like they did in 2016, when they trade up 15 spots to get Jared Goff with the first overall pick in the 2016 draft. But they gave a boatload of assets. They traded the Titans their first round pick in 2016. 16, two second round picks in 2016, a third round pick in 2016, a first round pick in 2017, and another third round pick in 2017. And then later they signed him to a bad contract and they had to give up assets to flip him for Matt Stafford. And look, the reality is there was a poll I saw on Turf Show Times where they asked, Would you rather the Rams have a two and fifteen record next year than a ten and seven record? And most people said two and fifteen. And look, the reality is if you want to build back quicker and more expeditiously going 215 and eating some of that dead cap definitely helps you but i don't think they're tanky i think that that word is like they're not going like the eagles did with doug peterson right a few years ago in 2021 or anything like that when he put Nud, nate sudfield in the game and you saw jalen hurts and he's like it's not right or anything with brian yeah. flores alleging he's getting 100k a game for a tank you don't think it's going to be anything like that right travis no of course not this is it, it, it this isn't trying to lose it's waiting to win there's a difference between those two things. The, trying to lose gets you thrown in jail. Okay, <laughs> that, that if you if you try to lose a game on purpose in professional sports, you go to prison. That's how this works. That's not what they're doing. This is we aren't good enough to compete at the very highest level. The way we will be good enough to compete at the very highest level is to get better players. We don't have access to the better players right now. We will have access to the better players if, in fact, we can pick higher in the draft and we've targeted some certain guys. I, no one's saying it's fun. It's not fun. I'm not looking forward to watching a football team go win four or five games. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun. What does sound like fun is Caleb Williams. What does sound like fun is the beginning of another run like they had with Jared Goff and the end of that run um, with Matthew Stafford that culminated in the Super Bowl. What was fun was watching Aaron Donald compete in the playoffs year after year after year after year. You don't go to the playoffs every year. It doesn't work that way. This is the beginning of a new window. It's long. It's not terribly exciting. It's not something that's a lot of fun. But the guys that put it together the first time are the same guys that are putting it together this time. And I have faith. And it's going to happen, but it's probably not going to happen this year. Yeah, and if you look at both sides of it, too, it really takes a king's ransom in draft picks and future draft picks to trade from a 15 to a one or anything like yeah. that. So it would be very costly to do something like that for a generational talent like Caleb Williams. And there's no guarantee that someone's going to be doing that. But also, too, there's no guarantee that Caleb Williams is going to be a superstar. I definitely True. think he has the potential to be. But the reality is, in this league, you're only relevant if you have a quarterback. And right now, Matthew Stafford still is, when healthy, one of the best quarterbacks in the league and they still have one of the best coaches in the league in Sean McVay and I think internally when they look at this division they probably say look we still have a lot of talent that if we hit on these defensive rookies and we get them up to speed early on that we can outscore teams and I do think privately they think they can win anywhere from seven to ten games I just think that is the reality and I think too just the word tank in general with this franchise I don't think that would sit well from an optic standpoint I don't think from a season ticket sales standpoint that's going to play up with the fan base mm -hmm. coming off a Super Bowl win I think it's more of a case where it, you just look at the roster construction in general, and then if that leads to losses after going for it, then you say, okay, fine, we're in a better position. Well, you, you get to evaluate, too. Dead money. Yeah, and everything everything you said I agree with, and then you also get to evaluate all your draft picks and figure out which ones are going to work and which ones aren't. Yeah, no, exactly. So, yeah, I don't think we'll be talking tank until later in the season. I kind of hate that word at this point when it comes to, I mean, there's no one's tanking. Like you said, you're going to end up in jail. I mean, I think we need to have a lottery for the NFL draft, but that's a whole other conversation. We're not going to get into the weeds on that. I mean, you always talk about the schedule day, the draft day. Imagine another day where we see the lottery. It's yep. another day that would probably outrate NBA playoff games. That's how big <laughs> the NFL is. But we've got some more of your YouTube questions coming up. We're going to be talking about the Rams and can they make the playoffs? playoffs and will the Rams consider bringing back an old friend and old safety that played for the Rams a few years ago that's coming up on locked on Rams all right first DMAC let's talk about our pals at Built Bar you're looking for a great snack I'm looking for a great snack everybody's looking for that delicious snack that maybe doesn't pack a whole bunch of calories but it's got to taste great 
Built Bars, you got to try this. If you're like me and you want that healthier snack choice, but you don't want to compromise on taste, it is as easy as Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and taste amazing. They are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's a great start. That's right, 100% real chocolate. They come in unbelievably delicious flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream. My favorite is the coconut almond ones. And I don't know how they do it. Not really a scientist. It's not my problem to figure it out. But I do know they taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better, they're healthy for you. 130 calories, just 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't even need to wait to get that box. For years, we've been telling you about ordering Built Bars at Built.com. And now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club while you can still get specialty flavors at Built.com. That's right. Head on over to your nearest Walmart right now today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate bar, or cookies coconut puff and if you're close to a sam's club you can run in there and get a 13 bar box of our hit flavors brownie batter puff and churro puff you can thank us later and welcome back to locked on rams thanks for choosing locked on rams your first listen every single day and our friends over on youtube drop your comments down below we could use them for future episodes and special shout out to our everydayers and if you're listening go over to youtube if you're on youtube go subscribe to the podcast but travis we have another question this is from david corelli over on youtube and he asks, do you travis and doug believe they will make the playoffs i'll let you bat lead off on that one trav yeah doug i think it's interesting I think, can they make the playoffs? Sure they can, but I think it's more of a function of the NFC than it is the Rams having a particularly strong team. When you look at the NFC this year, it is not loaded with teams that you look at to say, okay, there's a 12-win team, there's a 12-win team, there's an 11-win team, there's a 10-win team. You go through it, and in the just really quickly, you go through the divisions, San Francisco is going to be a playoff team. I think that's very likely, you know, the quarterback situation is a little weird. And then you got Seattle that's probably competing for one as well. So there's two spots, right? You go to the NFC North. The Lions are probably the only team on paper that look like a playoff team. And you go ahead and bet on the Lions as much as you want. I, I'm going to wait. I'm going to need to see that for myself before I believe that the Lions are a real team. Who knows what Jordan Love is? Who knows what Kirk Cousins, Cousins is? So that feels like maybe a one playoff uh, team division. You go to the South. That's definitely a one playoff team division. So now we're up to four. You go to the East. You got three pretty good teams and then the commander. So that takes up six spots if it goes the way that I'm suggesting it goes. Well, that leaves one more, right? So who is that one more team, a, a, an eight-win team at, at, at eight and nine? Maybe. Is it a nine-win team at nine and eight? Maybe. Can the Rams get to eight or nine? Yeah, they can. I, I, but again, seven, eight, nine wins is potentially the very worst result this team can get. If you get into a playoff in seven or eight or nine or 10 wins or whatever, sure, then you take your shot and anything can happen and we'll see how the schedule plays out. I think what's the more likely scenario is them missing the playoffs because the schedule is so front-loaded with difficult games like we talked about. All you everydayers know this because we talked about this a few days ago. The winnable games are at the end. But if you go through that first nine games and you're two and seven, don't go win five more over the stretch of the final 10 weeks or six or seven weeks of the season. That's the worst spot. Two wins is better than eight wins. As weird as that sounds, two wins get you the top pick or near the top pick. Three wins probably somewhere around the same. But that 7-8 range, maybe you missed the playoffs altogether, and now you're picking somewhere in the middle of the pack or towards the, the top of the top 10. That's not where you find franchise quarterbacks typically. Yeah, no, that's definitely the case in that one. I think you make a great point in that. Yeah, it's about those games later. And I think it's going to come down to those five games after the bye. They can yep. have a winning record after that. If they can go into the bye, just getting close to 500, I definitely think they have a chance. But I will preface this by saying that it's an absolute exercise in futility to try to accurately predict how a team with so much roster turnover, with so 100%. many rookies that are expected to contribute with so much up in the air is going to fair. But to me, everything hinges on the offensive line, the health and development of the defense. Having said that, I'm going to try to spin a positive today when it comes to the playoffs. I always got to anytime <laughs> I say playoffs, I got to be Jim Mora. Anytime Just I say hoping to win another game when you're asking me about the playoffs. <laughs> playoffs? Yeah. More playoffs, Iverson practice. But having said that, if you guarantee me 17 healthy games with Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cub, and Aaron Donald, if you guarantee me a competent offensive line where last year they were the least productive offensive line in the Super Bowl era, they were decimated by injuries. The Stafford was pressured nearly 50% of the time and only 20% 
they were blitzing. So they were getting pressure from that front floor. So yeah, to me, they were the university of Phoenix offensive line. Everyone was getting in. Okay. So yeah, I look at that offensive line. Also give me a better running game. You the, give me the running game. We saw towards the end of the season. than the one we saw at the beginning of the season and a defense that can do just enough to help this team outscore opponents. And I think this team has a chance to win games. I'm not looking for these big blowout wins. I want to yeah. outscore teams. I want to light up that scoreboard. Like Dominic Toretto said in fast, and the furious, it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile winning is winning. Am I crazy here to think that this team could make the playoffs though? Mr. Travis Rogers. No, no. Look every year, there are three teams that we think are going to be terrible that are pretty good. Every year, there are three teams that we think are going to be pretty good that are terrible. Unfortunately, the Rams were in the latter group last year. We thought the Rams were going to be pretty good. They weren't. They, they had a really lousy season. So, sure, it's possible. All the things you mentioned. You have a, a one of the best quarterbacks in your conference. You have the best coach in your conference. And you've got a schedule that, at least at the back end, could be conceived or perceived, I should say, as uh, as pretty favorable. Get through your first eight or nine games around 500, and yeah, there's a path to get there. But if we're just looking at the talent, if you're looking at what's coming back relative to what went out, this is a team that is probably less talented than it was a year ago. But to your point, can you get healthier? Sure. Can you get a little luckier? Sure. Can Sean McVay probably comes into this with a little bit of a different point of view as far as how they want to attack this season. Last year it was, hey, we're trying to run it back, right? We've got all these new, and we got to go for it every single day and we got to make sure that we're doing this, that, and the next thing. Fact of the matter is, this is more of a developmental year, and maybe they find some things that they don't even know they had, similar to what we talked about with Michael Hoyt at the end of last year. It's like, oh, okay, that's that's actually a lot better than we thought it might be. And you find a couple of those, and next thing you know, you find yourself, you've played 10 weeks of the season, you're at 500. Heck yeah, you go for it at that point. You see what happens. But to get to there, to get to that jump off point, to really kind of hit the gas and, and go for it, I think a lot of things are going to have to break their way. Can it happen? Sure it can. Is it likely to? Probably not. Probably not, but I will say that I kind of went back yesterday and looked at, look, this team got five wins with basically a practice squad level offensive You're right. line. It really was a testament to their coaching that they were able to take five games. And look, this is a quarterback's league. This is a coach's league. And you mentioned some of those other teams, the NFC. I give the Rams the advantage in pretty much 90% of their games from a coaching and quarterback standpoint. Yeah. And I have my doubts about Geno Smith and Brock Purdy. I mean, we talk about the Dodgers a good amount on the show. We're both Dodger fans. What happened to Max Muncy the first year he came off that UCL injury where he was healthy? He was healthy right. and he was good enough to play, but it impacted his game in a big way. And it took him to until the next season to really get back to the player that he was. Also, I think you're going to have teams schemed up on a little bit. I know the 49ers defense is fantastic. I'm not doubting that. But Geno Smith, maybe he's just a late bloomer and this is who he is at this stage of his career. I think the Seahawks are going to score points. But like you said, look, if this was another year where this conference was a powerhouse, I probably wouldn't be having this conversation because of the inexperience on defense. But I think it's so wide open in the NFC that, look, I just just want we've got five wins give me three more wins give me four more wins i mean give me five and four heading into the bye or something close to that then after yep. that look i think we can beat the seahawks cardinals commanders and browns i got four wins right there and like i said i hate doing this in the nfl where there's so much talent and every team is good but still i think there is a world where it does happen i do think it just like i said earlier it hinges on health and the offensive line but yeah it's going to be very interesting to see how this year plays out and we're going to see this division that really is the toughest division or in the conversation for toughest division in football. And like we said in the previous show, like our everyday listeners know that if you had this schedule flip flop and you can allow this defense to get some more experience early on, I think mm -hmm. that would help them. But Hey, this is how it breaks, right? This is what it is. And I, I think the, if, if you are an optimist and if you're a Rams fan, that's hoping that they find a, a back door into the playoffs. The best scenario is you look at the NFC. There's exactly one team that I think we would all agree on is likely to be very, very, very good. And that's Philadelphia. After that, there's a lot of kind of shoulder shrugs. And yeah, I think they'll probably be good. Detroit is one of the favorites on, on paper going into the season. I want to say that again. The Detroit Lions are one of the favorites in the NFC going into the season. Go ahead and, and can you be better than the Detroit Lions? It's not a huge ask to be better than the Detroit Lions. So sure, there's a path to be there. Yeah, I know when you lay it out like that, definitely makes me want to go for it. I just think the two is a high variance team. They go seven and ten, they go ten and seven. I mean, they could they can be there's like a two or three game difference. Seven and ten way, though, but that that's the scary one to me. Seven and ten literally is the worst result I think this team could have. I I, I and, and because it leaves you nowhere. 
it, it leaves you in a place where if you want to move up, you're going to have to pay a ransom to do it. And you're not in the, the spot automatically. If you win four or five, you're very close to the front. Maybe you don't have to spend nearly as much to jump up one or two spots as opposed to where if you're seven and 10 and you're picking 11th or 12th, now you got to go spend a lot more capital getting near the top if that's in fact what they want to do. Yeah, no, you're right about that. I mean, if you're at that stage, it definitely doesn't benefit you. I do think this team has a shot at going nine and eight. I think they could punch their ticket to the postseason. I'll be the white pill here. I'll be the positive one. I'll just say it's going to happen just because yeah, I don't want to see Why my not? team tanking. I just think that with this core <laughs> quarterbacks league, you give me health. Like I said, all this goes out of the window if they start dropping like flies. It's, it's another episode of Squid Game like we saw last year where they're dropping like flies and everyone getting injured. And that goes out of the window. But I think if this team's healthy, <laughs> they have a chance and i think too they got that fire back in their belly but and next on um, the final segment here on locked on rams we're going to talk about bringing back a player that was on the rams a few years ago could he have an impact that's coming up on locked on rams and welcome back to locked on rams thank you for making locked on rams your first listen every single day free and available wherever you get your podcast and also we're available on youtube and want your comments down below and this next question comes from rd over on youtube with the rams be interested in re-signing John Johnson the third I would love to see him back in a Los Angeles Rams uniform so of course John Johnson the third we know the success he had with this Rams organization really a fan favorite he was a guy that great communicator on defense made plays had that great combination of run stopping ability the pass defense ability the Browns did officially release John Johnson the third they designated him as a post June 1st cut is on the street if you look at the Rams safety picture right now. You got Fuller, you got Yeast, you got Lake, you got Jason Taylor third. We talked about Quindale Johnson a few days ago, but Trav, do you like the idea of bringing JJ three back to the Rams? I think that this is a classic example of somebody being a good fit in one place and maybe not such a great fit in another place. John Johnson, the third was a, Rams dream scenario when they took him out of Boston college, right? He was a, he was a mid round pick. He was a guy that came in that, you know, you were pretty certain he was going to make the team, but you didn't know what kind of impact he was going to have. Well, fast forward four or five games into his rookie season, he's starting at safety. He, He went from a guy that was fighting to make the team to making the team, to being a starter, to being somebody that you really could rely on. And that's what ultimately happened in Cleveland saying and seeing the sort of football player he was, giving him an, a, a, an opportunity to go make some money there. Didn't work out to the way that I'm sure the Browns wanted to or John Johnson the third wanted it to. But sometimes when you come back to some familiar territory, you can rediscover some of that magic. You can rediscover some of that thing that made you a great player in the first place, whether it's the coach, whether it's uh, just just environment, comfort, comfort, any of these things. But I always like a guy that's had some success in a place that all of a sudden maybe isn't quite as successful in the place after that or a couple of places after that coming back to where they had so much success to begin with and seeing if they can refine it and especially if he's cheap that's a place where the rams need some support they need some depth at those positions and as long as it doesn't cost them a whole heck of a lot why not go for it yeah, I want to touch on what you said at the end. If he comes at the cheap, if you see the value in I think that is where it makes sense. Because after the Rams didn't re-sign Taylor Rabb, he goes with the Bills in free agency. Safety was still a position of need. And I think they yes. could absolutely upgrade that position and bring in a guy with some experience, a guy that knows what it's like to be a Los Angeles Ram and play at SoFi Stadium. He has those warm and fuzzy memories. And yeah, sometimes you don't want to get back with your ex, but sometimes it can work out. And also, too, they didn't use a high draft pick on a safety. They didn't go out and sign anyone. And before he signed with the Cleveland Browns, he was a team captain, right? He was a productive player. He started 48 of his 54 games from 2017 to 2020, made 512 total tackles, had eight picks, 41 pass defense, had four fumbles. But also I look at it too, is we talked about it earlier in this show. The defense is green. They are young and inexperienced. Having a veteran come in and teach some of these DBs, give them the tutelage and kind of be a guy that can mentor them. I can help this team early in the season if they do want to have some success. I I got a chance to talk with him one night. Uh, We were doing a show from the Rams kind of kickoff party. It was about, it was right before they were going to start camp. It was over in Hollywood and they brought in a bunch of players and we sat down and did a show and they they brought guys through. We talked to Les Need, we talked to Sean McVay, a whole bunch of different players. Um, And they brought John Johnson through. And at this point, I didn't know him at all. I knew he he was a good player. He'd been there for a year or two. It's like, okay. 
what you just described, Doug, that that veteran presence, that that guy that can bring some sort of stability to a group that maybe lacks that that NFL pedigree. He had that as a young player. So go ahead and add another two or three years of experience on top of that. I would imagine that having coming, having a player like him, having a presence like him, whether or not he's the best player in that position group, I don't think is, you know, it's important, but it might not be the very most important thing, but having a person like that, having a professional like that, having somebody that can set the tone. And this isn't a perfect example because Andrew Wetworth was still an incredibly high level player when they went to Cincinnati and brought him to LA, but his presence was just as important as his play that he taught the other four guys on that offensive line, how to be NFL linemen, how to be NFL players, how to take it a certain way, how to prepare, how to take care of your body. I think that Johnson could have a similar impact. Yeah, I definitely think you can have a similar impact. I think one, get those young DBs up to speed, the run defense ability, veteran leadership. I definitely checks off a lot of boxes. I would love to see triple J. I would love to say G I would love to see JJ three back in a Rams uniform. Give me John Johnson, the third back in a Rams uniform, but I'm not in charge. And I also know this organization, <laughs> they don't want to spend a lot of money then, but he's going to be probably on the cheap and they yep. do have their eye on 2024. But I look at those intangible benefits that he could provide. So I love the idea of JJ three back in a Rams uniform, but that's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Rams podcast. Let us know down below in the comment section. Do you want to see the Rams sign John Johnson the third? Do you think the Rams are considering tanking? Or what are your thoughts on the Rams being in tank mode? And also, will the Rams make the playoffs? Let us know down below in the comment section. That man to your right is the legend, Mr. Travis Rogers, the Rams pre-half and post-game show host for the Rams flagship radio network, ESPN 710 LA. You can follow him on Twitter at Travis Rogers. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at D. Mac underscore LA. And until next time, whose house is locked on Rams house.